in a dark world filled with deceit. One united voice is crying out. Revealing the truth of God's word. It's time to expose the hidden truth and unravel the lies. While we're living beyond Satan's little season with Sister Crystal and Brother Phil. Welcome to Living in Satan's Little Season Show. We're your hosts, Sister Crystal, Brother Phil. Topic today, God's created realms. We're going to go over the realms that God's created. Seven realms. We're going to go over those today because no one really talks about these in church. I've never once ever heard a message on the realms that God's created and used for certain things. No, I think people maybe are aware of just a few of these, not all of them. And like one that's really pushed in our society is the realm of the dead. That's pushed a lot of places. But there's other realms, and we're going to go over that. Matter of fact, the two, first two verses of the Bible <laughs> talk about three of these realms. Wow. Three of the six slash, I say six slash seven because Hades could be split into actually two. Mm-hmm. A good side and a bad side, so there could be actually two realms there. As opposed to just one, I lumped it into one realm, but it's actually two realms that's right, lumped like into coin. one. Right. Right. I mean, like two sides of a coin or right. whatever. That's kind of the way the Bible it describes that realm. Right. But I've only called that one realm, but it's actually two realms in one. But anyway, seven realms. Mm-hmm. And the first realm, and then we're going to read the very first two verses of the Bible that talk about three of these, two, three of these realms. Okay. And so we're going to go over these. And then the scriptures that talk about them. So let's start here on Genesis 1, verse 1. Because that's the first thing that comes right out of the gate when you read your Bible. Okay, Go ahead and read Genesis 1, 1, and 2 for us. In the beginning, God made the heaven and the earth. But the earth was unseen and unready. And darkness was upon the abyss. And the Spirit of God bore upon the waters. Okay, so the first, of course, realm... Mm-hmm. Being created was heavens and, you know, that's plural, and earth. So we're going to go over heaven first. That's the first created realm that God created here. It says he made, he created. That's kind of what that word means. That That's actually found 781 wow. times in the Bible. Wow. The idea of heaven. Now, <laughs> what a lot of people don't understand about heaven is that it's not just the place where God resides. It's also referred to as the sky right. sometimes. That's why it's you have to look at context. And you can't always tell because when, when you hear see that word heaven in your Bible, that it means, oh, that's where God lives. Right. Or that's where God and the angels reside and all that. Right. It could also just mean where the birds fly. Exactly. The I was going to say, I was just thinking the birds of the heavens. Yeah, bir- yeah. The birds of the heavens. Well, the birds of the sky. That's what that means. Mm-hmm. And also where the firmament is, where the sun, moon, and stars, stars reside, exactly. is another... A of part the of the heavens mm-hmm. that's talked about in scripture. And, I, and we're not going to go into all these places. But the whole thing is this is one realm that God's kind of lumped into one. Right. Now, obviously, there's when it comes to heaven, there's different kind of parts of this realm. You know, there's the lower parts of heaven, the upper parts to heaven, and the middle parts to heaven. There's mm-hmm. Heaven is all over the place. Right. It's, it's, it's a... Kind of a general statement, but it's called like one realm. Right. And um, you want to see what that Greek word is there for that one. Oranenses? Oranos. Oranos? Oh, sorry. Yeah, Oranos is the Greek word that means heavens. And of course, it could mean sky sometimes. That's why you can't always tell if only based on context does it mean sky. And sometimes not even on context. Can you tell? Mm. There's a lot of words in our Bible mm-hmm. that we really don't. It kind of varies between context of what that word means, and we don't always know, well, what's that exactly referring to? We don't know. Um, right. So, like, when the Bible says the heavens, well, is that the place where God lives? Or is that the place mm-hmm. where the bird flies? Okay, that's, that's... Or where the stars are. Or where the sun, moon, and stars reside. You know, mm-hmm. you just don't know, or someplace in between. It could be sometimes referred to heavens as being on a high mountain. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, it's crazy, but it, that's kind of the way it works. 
Um, that's found all over the Bible. Some might translate it air because that's what it is. It's the air is right. called the heavens. Right. So if you jump up a foot into the heavens, you've jumped mm-hmm. up into the air. Uh, that's it, that's kind of the way it works. Um, so that's kind of in Christianity. That's found. We, we know that's found all over the Bible. Right. Okay. And so you know when Elijah went to heaven, ascended in, to heaven in mm-hmm. a chariot of fire, people just assume, oh, that's where God lives. But mm-hmm. you know what? It could also be where the birds residing just went up into the air. Right. So, you know, we don't know based on that scripture that he went to heaven, which I know he didn't, because based on other scriptures that no one has ascended to heaven, the Bible says in, in um, what is it, John 3, 13. Right. Yeah. So, it, obviously, there's, you know, based on a context of other ones that it might have been the sky that he went to and... He just was taken off and kind of put into retirement, so to speak. <laughs> okay, the second place, of course, in Genesis 1, the second realm we're going to talk about, because we're not going to put a lot of time into each one of these realms, mm-hmm. but I want to talk about these because this is what God actually creates. Mm-hmm. He doesn't create planets. Right. He doesn't create anything like like solar universes, systems. solar yeah. systems. These are all these words that are... You know, are the scientists of this world, the satanic forces of this world yeah. have created for us. Right. No, no. What God creates is realms that right. for different purposes. And each right. realm has a different purpose. Of course, second one after heaven was earth. Right. And that realm was actually created for us, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that right? I mean, he created the earth for us. And this is why we get in, in the earth, of course... What's the Greek word here uh, for earth? Is it gay? Gay. 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 The it's H word, is silent. It, it's, yeah, yeah. It's gay or, or a lot of times we'll get the word, it, it's G. It, sometimes it, it starts with the word G. So some words like geography, uh-huh. we get that. Or geoengineering. This is all what was mm-hmm. known as Earth. Well, yeah, it's there's the geo, which geo, is where right. we get the geo. And then some, there was actually a car called the geo for a while. Right. And um, I remember, so, you know, and that was basically means earth. Right. World. Right. It, earth. That's what it means. It, so the, the idea there is earth, and that's found a staggering over 3,000 times all right. over the Bible. That word is used that's all amazing. over the place in the Bible. 3, 000, I, that's why we can't go over all these because it would be like... How many shows could we have on that word earth and a word study of that? But we know it just means simply land. Right. Ground. That's all it means. Mm-hmm. Ground or land. So a lot of times we'll see the word earth and we'll think, that's why when you talk, when it talks about God created the heavens and the land. Mm-hmm. Okay. The land is what he created because we can't live on water. We can only, right. remember originally there was only water. Because remember the, the God's spirit went over the surface of the waters. Right. To, and then had dry, dry ground appear. That was because, one of the days. Yeah. yeah, that was one of the days. So we have to have land to live on because right. we can't literally live on water. We Because we're not water creatures. We're land creatures. Right. Okay. That's what, how God created us. Well, and soil. So, it's, yeah, soil. It's, it's soil. It's, it's, it's yeah, soil. It's, well, it means soil. Now, there's another word in Greek that talks about like inhabited lands. Mm. Like it talks about the, that the Roman had Rome had taken over the whole world. Well, that word for world is a slightly different one. It's more of like inhabited world. Mm-hmm. In other words, they, ha- they haven't taken over areas that no one lives. Right. But this world, this word for for world or earth, is just all the ground. Right. Every place there's ground, that's part of the world. Which is interesting. So I'm going to go off here. God made the earth for us. Right. So one thing that we've been learning is that being connected to the earth is important. Walking outside barefoot, walking on grass, connecting yourself, grounding supposedly right. to the earth is gives you energy. Is good and and all animals are grounding. They're connected to the earth, and God made them. And it's good. It's just it's realizing the earth is important part of who we are. As beings, because we can't live without all the connections to the earth, the air and the water. We're and inherently things. connected to earth. Yes, we're not. We're essentially we're earthlings, right? <laughs> God actually created us out of the dust, exactly of this ground or soil or earth. That, that, that this is word used. That's what, exactly right. the same word used. Exactly. Here. Okay. Yes. 
That's why this realm is, we're, we're, we're foreigners to heaven because this realm is the one that we were actually created in. Right. This atmosphere that we live in has been purposefully designed for us. And right. we are not expected or should be expecting to live anywhere other than here. See, well, a lot of times when we think of the word earth, we kind of look at, we think of, because we're so programmed in our school systems, think of a globe. Mm -hmm. A globe model of, you know, oh, we live on this earth. No, that's not what that word means. It just means, as a matter of fact, it's translated a number of different ways depending on a translator and where you go mm -hmm. in the Bible. Again, we're not going to go over all of them because there's over 3,000 places in the Bible. Right. But sometimes it's translated earth. Other times it's translated ground. Sometimes it's translated land. Sometimes it's translated world. They just translate it, but it all means the ground, essentially, of wherever you live. Country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't mean what we think it means, like a globe Mm -hmm. And like our whole planet, like people think that way. That's well, not like, what that you know, means. people think, oh, one day we can go to Mars. Well, I don't think God's designed us to be anywhere but here. And we then maybe are the from new Earth. Earth. Yeah. We're not going, <laughs> we're, we're never going to go to Mars. That's, that, <laughs> I, I know, even if they show me video footage, I know they can fake all this stuff. Now. <laughs> right. I know with VR and crap like that now, they can totally fake any kind of Mars landing and make it look so real. Mm -hmm. I know that's what they're going to do mm -hmm. if we do go to Mars. So I know that it's going to be fake. But the whole but point is... we are is, here. This is where we, we are, are Yeah, to be. we're not mm -hmm. leaving this realm. Right. We're, until our, we're, our time's up. Our and God, yeah, yes. And God takes us to the next realm. Exactly. And we're going to talk a little bit about that here in a little bit. <laughs> that's, but see, this is the second realm that's God created in the Bible. And the third realm is in the very next verse. Uh-huh. And that's the realm where, where, where what's called the abyss. Mm. And that's why he says, and darkness was upon the abyss, mm. the Bible says. Okay, so what's this abyss? Okay, so if you think about it, if darkness is upon the abyss, it's a very deep, deep trench. <laughs> that's what I would have to, you know, surmise. <laughs> well, we know the abyss was mentioned. The last place it's actually mentioned in our Bibles. Is that's where Satan was uh -huh. bound for a thousand years. It's mm -hmm. in this abyss. And we don't know much about it. Obviously, it's found how many times in our Bibles? 45 times. Right. Well, so I could do a, I could probably do a show going over some of the things that's mentioned about this abyss place. Okay, we don't really know much about it because honestly, we only know what the Bible says about it. But it obviously was a, a tomb that uh, or a prison that imprisoned Satan for the thousand years. Well, it's and a then, very deep trench i can think of like you know well sometimes they translate it bottomless pit, pit right you know and so they translate it different ways depending on how the translators go about it but, but it's a very or the deep a, a chasm the deep, like a yeah. chasm you can take it like this chasm is like so enormous that it's so dark and so empty i guess you could say that there's no end in sight honestly we really really I, I could do a show on this i don't really want to go too much into it but again it's found right there in the second verse of the bible and it's found in the last book of the Bible, mm -hmm. in Genesis, in, in Revelation. Revel Revelation as well. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 20, the last time it's mentioned is that's where Satan was bound for the right. thousand years. And of course, we know that he escaped from that abyss, but I think it's still around. There's well, no, there's nothing that says where it went. I don't know if he was escaped after. or he was released. Well, it says he was released. But so, the idea you know, is, I don't he think He was it's released someplace. because God had a plan and purpose for, oh, yeah. for using him oh, yeah. again. You know, he gets used as a pawn in God's plans <laughs> every time. Okay, so this is found 45 times in the Bible. Obviously, the first book of the Bible it's mentioned, the last mm -hmm. book of the Bible it's mm -hmm. mentioned. So there you go. Now, the next place it talks about is actually Hades. Okay. And Hades is actually split up into, it could be split up into two, two rooms. Right. There's the death side and then the Hades side. Right, the good and the bad. The death side where the bad, essentially evil people go. Mm hmm and then you have the good side, which is called Abraham's bosom. bosom right. Which was where... The Rich righteous man. went for Rich most man. of mm -hmm. human history. And now I think that we're, you know, beyond all that now. it's It's been done away with and, and, and cast into the lake of fire. Right. This realm of the Hades. But this place is found, what, how many, how many times in the Bible? 82 times. 82 times in the Bible. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you know, a lot of, um, if you're into a lot of fantasy shows, fantasy movies, a lot of, uh, of Greek or Roman mythology, mythology right. will talk about Hades right. as being a character of one of the gods. It really wasn't a, a god. It was a realm that God created for the dead. Well, yeah. you know, there's supposedly keys to Hades. 
No, no, and Jesus even stated in Revelation that right. he had the keys to death. Right, right, but some of these yeah. movies will show that there's someone in charge of the gates to Hades, and only certain people can pass through in and there, you know, with permission and whatnot, the, the evil side, supposedly, but... Sometimes it's translated grave, and most of the Old Testament is translated mm-hmm. to grave. Yeah. Or even sometimes, even in the New Testament, it's translated hell. Mm-hmm. But it's not hell like what we see, what we think of as hell. It's not hell. It's well, just a waiting place for the dead for most of human history. Okay, so I'm going to ask you, what is the difference between Hades and Sheol? Sheol. Yeah. Well, Sheol is the same place as Hades. Okay, because that's, that's another the, definition okay, of it. That's the Hebrew. I, I see. I'm going with all Greek, Greek because right. It, but it's I'm just saying somebody might be across. familiar with that word. But we know that Sheol and Hades is the same place because okay. in the New Testament. When they quote from the Old Testament about Hades, they they use Sheol and they translate Hades in the okay, New Testament. All right. So that's how we know Sheol and Hades is uh, identical okay, place. I'm just, no just difference. throwing that out there. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sheol in the Old Testament is, you know, like the the Hebrew word. I don't go by the Hebrew, I think it's been kind of modified some. Mm. It's not as accurate as the the our, my, our Greek Bibles are. That's right. why I only go by the Greek Bibles. Right. Because the Greek is consistent all the way through Old and New Testament. You got the same exact words used, same phrases used, right. and everything else is used. Right. I should have brought that up, but yes, it's it's where all the dead departed souls went to. Right. You know, angels drag all the souls down there. And they're, for most of human history, that was a waiting place until right. the end, until right. Judgment Day. Right. And I believe that happened in the first century. And now we're beyond all that. And now we immediately... Upon our death, right. we get judged and we get sentenced mm-hmm. either to our, our reward, we get our you know eternal reward in New Jerusalem on New Earth, or we go to the lake of fire outside mm-hmm. of New Jerusalem mm-hmm. where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. And we could actually add another realm. The lake of fire is a realm. Yeah. Which we could, I could have put Extension that in there. of Hades? Well, no, no, because Hades got combined and, at, and, and, and thrown the into lake the lake of fire. Of fire. Right. Okay. And so that is technically another realm right. that got created for humankind. Well, death but, and Hades were thrown into the yeah, lake of fire. Yeah, we're thrown into lake of fire. Right. And so this, there's two sides to Hades. There's death side, mm-hmm. where the bad people went. And then there's a good side. Hades, which is Abraham's bosom sometimes right. called. Right. That's a good side. And then both of those, though, at, at Judgment Day, were cast into the lake of fire right. because now all the righteous were going to go to New Jerusalem. Well, and, and yeah. what the Bible talks about and those, the places, that was in the heart of the earth. Right. That, that, yeah. Death and Hades, this two sides to Hades, mm-hmm. was actually in, in, in the middle of the earth someplace. Mm-hmm. That's how we know that Achan, when he, did, when right. he sinned against God... He went alive into Hades when the opened, earth opened, opened up. and swallowed mm. him up. Yeah, and it, yeah. And he went alive into Hades. Now, how far that is down, I don't know. But he's <laughs> the only that, people is, in the Bible that's ever done is that. Is that the first slide I've ever created? <laughs> that's one fall I wouldn't want to be thinking what will happen when I reach the bottom, that's for sure. <laughs> I don't know what happened, man. But yeah, well, that, we've already talked about that right, on other shows. Okay. but. That's this is uh, of course. There's lots of scriptures that talk about that. Yeah. Psalm. You want to read Psalm six five there about Hades. For there is no remembering you in death, and in Hades, who shall make acknowledgments to you? Again, see, no one's gonna care. When you're when you're dead, you can't really do anything. You're kind of at the mercy. Of, of course, this is in the Old Testament. I believe now death and Hades are gone away. With are go- are gone mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. I believe they were combined with the lake of fire. And now we immediately get judged at death. We either get rewarded and get our... our, our because this, that's what this life is now. I'm yeah. figuring out this life is just a proving ground to so that we can see, okay, are, are we deserving of righteousness? Are we deserving of the reward of New Jerusalem and our inheritance and eternal life? Or... Are we, or do we not deserve that and we're going to be, be cast out into outer darkness? So I'm going to say a little funny. This, this world is like a big washing machine. <laughs> you either get the young, the gunk washed off when, when you're done, or when God looks at you, you still have stains on you, so you got to go back in. <laughs> Hard to kind of understand this, most people, because they're not conditioned to think this way about how everything works. That's why we're going over these realms that God's created, because people aren't conditioned to think in the way that this is how God does everything. He does everything in these realms. He creates these realms for different reasons. And mm-hmm. I'd even add the lake of fire for, 
to uh, as mm-hmm. another realm. What mm-hmm. that is a, a third, or actually would be a sixth, seventh, seventh, seventh or eighth mm-hmm. realm of mm-hmm. God that He's created for the wicked. Mm-hmm. To go after death. Revelation 1, 17, 18 talks about Hades. Go ahead and read that one. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last, and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and Hades. So you see, death and Hades, he has the keys to both those places. Right. This is what Jesus was declaring there. In the first chapter of Revelation. Mm-hmm. Of course, so when John writes later on that death and Hades were then cast into the lake of fire, see, he had the key, Jesus had the keys to release everyone from that. He hadn't done that yet. He his release happened, I believe, in at 70 AD in his return. And when, when it was time for everything to transpire. Then death and Hades, these two places right. that Jesus had the keys to. Right. I have the keys to death and Hades, which is the two sides of Hades. And um, he was going to just release the dead. And everyone was going to get basically a resurrection from the dead. Right, right, right. Including the wicked. Now, if you're wicked, obviously you get resurrected to eternal punishment, shame, and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And if you're righteous, you get eternal life. Right. It's all good. You know, this is more proof that this death and Hades place is mentioned all over the place. We got Revelation 6, 7, 8. Now, this is another mention of this place, death and Hades. Right. Okay, go ahead. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. And I looked and behold, a pale horse and its rider's name was death and Hades followed him. And they were given authority over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword and with the famine and with the pestilence and by wild beasts of the earth. So here, death and Hades is mentioned again mm-hmm. together. See, that's why they're... And, and like that's why twins. death they're and twins. Hades were following... Because that's where the dead went. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm trying to explain that to people and they don't understand when I say... Because people automatically, when I say, oh, death is... People think that, oh, no, we can't be in... Death is not done away with yet. No, death is a place... Right. And see, death and Hades was following. See, mm-hmm. and, and they're both together. That, that's why. And so with Jesus, with the key to that, those well, two and, places. Yeah, because he yeah. was given dominion overall because right. of the sacrifice he made. But So you've got to remember, there's all these different places. Even Psalm 6, 5, which you read, had mm-hmm. death and Hades in there. Right. You notice, remember? Look, if you read that, for there is no remembering you in death right. and in Hades who make an argument of you? See, right. again, see, there's death and Hades. They're both together because he, it, it's repeating. It's the same, really the same right, right, right. general location right. place. So there's four places in the Bible where death and Hades are mentioned together. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's how you know that they're just, that's where the dead went. Right. When you died. It's right. simple as that. Now, those places have been combined with the lake of fire. Mm-hmm. Those places were thrown into the lake of fire. So now God doesn't destroy. He just rearranges things a little bit. That's right. what he did, okay? Right. So that's what's going on. And of course, now those two places, I believe, are in the lake of fire. Mm-hmm. And so at, and when, when we die from this earth, when, when we finish our life here in this realm of right. earth, right. we get judged and we either go to the lake of fire if we're wicked, mm-hmm. which I hope none of you guys listening to the show are going to go there. Right. But it's all based on what we've done in our lives. Right. It's like this giant report card. Right. And at the end, you get judged on how well you did and how you lived your life. So I'm, I'm trying to get you to see, of course, Revelation 20, verse 13, 14. Go ahead and read that one. That's in the last place that death and Hades is mentioned together. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them. And they were judged in each one of them accordingly to what they had done. Then death and Hades were both thrown into the lake of fire this is the second death, the lake of fire. Because the lake of fire is the second death. Mm-hmm. Death in Hades was now combined with the lake of fire. So no more lake of fire now. Right. Okay. I mean, lake of fire is here, but no more death in Hades. It's it's now all one place now. Consolidated. Death, it's, yeah, it's a consolidation. <laughs> That's what God did. I'm just trying to get us to understand this is what the Bible actually teaches. Fourth realm. Right. We're going to go realm. to the fifth realm now. Right. Fifth realm, Tartarus. Okay. Now, there's only really one place in the New Testament. That this okay. place is mentioned, actually. But 
there is another passage of scripture that does have this. And I want to go over a few of these here. Because it talks about this idea of judgment. And there were some angels that sinned against God. And they were judged. And they were cast into this realm. Mm -hmm. These wicked angels were. Right. I believe this happened. The watchers, which, you know, it's kind of mentioned in the book of Enoch, a little bit more detail of what happened. But this, what, that's what this realm is really all about. Now, the only place it's really mentioned in the New Testament is Second Peter. But there are some other places I think are referencing this in the New Testament. Right. Okay? And so we're going to go over these four places. Now, it's also found, of course, in the book of Enoch. Mm -hmm. And we know that um, in Enoch chapter 20, that one of the angels, mm. one of the archangels, one of their areas that they are over overseeing is this realm called Tartarus. Tartarus, okay. Yeah. And that's that's Uriel. Uriel okay. is the angel, uh, the archangel, okay. supposedly that has the realm that oversees this realm of the Watchers, essentially okay. the, the wicked angels that that rebelled and sinned against God. Okay. Yeah. And okay, the, the only places to mention. We'll go ahead and read this Second Peter. Chapter 2, verse 4. That's okay. the only really mention of this realm, but there are some other ones we're going to go into as well. Okay. So go ahead and, and read that one. For if God spared not of sinning angels, but in chains of the infernal region, Tartarus, delivered them up for being kept for judgment. Okay, it's a little cryptic because I, I, I want to do that in the Apostolic Bible Polyglot version because it mentions there this idea that um, the infernal region is actually the phrase used mm. to describe this this realm of the dead, which is called Tartarus. Now, this, I looked up this word infernal, because I was kind of curious. I'm like, how many places is this word infernal used in the Bible? Mm -hmm. Well, there's only three other places, and they all of them seem to be re referencing this same realm. Okay. But they don't use uh, the, the word, word region. They word, use the word infernal. Mm. So this word infernal region or infernal, I think is talking about the same place, which is this t place called Tartarus, okay. which is some place that the angels were cast into these, these fallen angels were cast into, but they weren't cast here. They were cast. There's some other place. People will ask me, where are all these? <laughs> we don't even know where we're at. Honestly, <laughs> people ask me, well, where, you know, where is heaven? Where is new earth? Where is all these realms? We don't know where anything is. Uh -huh. We don't even know where we live. Honestly, we don't know anything. But, you know, of course, that doesn't stop the scientists to say, you are here and they give you a big map of the Milky Way galaxy. Right, right. No, right. no, see, that's a satanic deception. No, we, are, we don't know where we're at, honestly. Because God's created these realms and we are living where we live. We know we live somewhere because we're here. But where this is at compared to all, where all these other ones are, we don't really right. know. Okay. Well, I mean, we've heard of Tartarus. But to really understand the full scope of what this place is and knowing who it was designed for, supposedly just the bad angels, right? And let's go and read some other passage of scripture that talk about this infernal region. Okay. Okay. Second Peter two seventeen it talks about it again. Go ahead and read that one. These are waterless springs, clouds being driven by a tempest, ones to whom the infernal region of darkness is kept into the eon. Okay, so again, infernal region. It doesn't, they, they add the word region, but infernal it implies this basically Tartarus place. Mm. This is what it's describing there. Okay, now you go to Jude chapter 1, verse 6. Let's go ahead and read that one because this also describes this infernal region as well. Go ahead. Also, angels not keeping their own sovereignty, but leaving their own dwelling place for judgment of a great day. Bonds in everlasting under the infernal region he keeps. I'm sorry it's a little bit cryptic the way it sounds, you know, using the apostolic Bible polygon. But this is the one that gave me exactly where all this place, all these infernal. Mm -hmm. And this it actually kind of sounds a lot like the second Peter passage of scripture where it says the God did not spare the angels. Same here in Jude 1.6. Also the angels not keeping their own sovereignty mm -hmm. were thrown into this infernal region. So are we saying these are the angels that... Were cast out of heaven, the third that went with... No, this is not that fall. Okay. There's another fall where God had put angels over watching mankind on the earth. Okay. And some of them decided, hey, we want to get married and, and we want to give up our heavenly estate. Uh. And, 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 
and married these women, and that's what they did. Okay. And so they rebelled against God in that way, and so they ended up being cast into this infernal region. Okay. okay which we call it. It's called Tartarus. Well, but. it and and some of the literature and things. I mean, people are have great creativity when it comes to thinking of these realms and places. A lot of it does include this idea that it's this kind of dark, mysterious place that evil runs amok or is in control of. There is a clue of where this place might be in the next verse we're going to read. Okay. Okay, so there, it's just a clue. Okay. Okay, we don't know for sure, but we there there might be a clue of where this place is in Jude chapter 1, verse 13. Okay. Okay, and this is why we're going to we're gonna read this one, because we don't know exactly where they're all at, but this is an idea. Go ahead and read Jude one thirteen there. Wild waves of the sea foaming up their own shame. Wandering stars, ones to whom the infernal region of darkness into the eon is being kept. Okay, so here, you know, you can read it in other versions that may be a little more less cryptic, but here you get this clue that maybe... Where are these wandering stars? Now, wandering stars, we know where they're at. Those are the stars that we call, quote, planets. Uh. And, you know, they're Mars, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn. Those are wandering stars. So it could be that this is the location. Well, it's darkness. Of the infernal regions. Uh -huh. Up there somewhere. Then these wandering stars are actually part of that infernal region. That they're, well, and we that, can't that's get what, to them. Yeah. So I'm just, I don't know for a fact. This is a clue. This is just a clue where this might be at, but it could be obviously there. Well, and that yeah. supposedly yeah. also waters. We're, we're outside our realm into that realm. We don't mm -hmm. know where that realm is at is there actually, but it references this these wandering stars, which that you know, we, those are the planets that we call the planets. Well, so. and if you have children and if you watched any kind of child shows, movies from years past, you'll remember there's... This one about Sinbad. Okay, and, Sinbad, And yeah. basically he's a thief, and he's he ends up meeting this goddess, supposedly, and she tells that goes to the realm of the... Um, yeah, Tartarus. They go, they go to Tartarus on that one. Right. And yeah, that was a place, you know, no one's ever come back from there type right, scenario. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, I don't care, I'm going to go there anyway. And of course, you know, being Sinbad, he, it was, he, it was, it, he's able to go there and come back. He's the only one, you know. Right, but, right, right. Yeah, but... But, but they, they do this in these shows, but... There could be a certain truth to this, but I mean that at least gets the idea. That there's another realm out there, and they they reference it as Tartarus. So, right, and that's why I really think that um, this place is somehow are linked to the wandering stars, which I believe may be rebellious angels. It, Very well. It seems like the stars and angels are somehow maybe linked, and maybe the wandering stars are the rebellious ones. I don't know then, how well, it okay, all works. Then question. It, let's just go with that thought. Then why are the scientists and people today wanting to get to one of them? Yeah, I, I don't know what their end game is. I, I, I'm, I'm done trying to figure out how... <laughs> they, obviously, they give us these clues on, oh, this is what we want to do. And then all of a sudden, it's like, but their end game is something they're not telling us. What their end game is, I have no clue, but I just know it's a lie. Well, everything, so I don't even go along with all their all their. Everything nonsense. they're up to is no good, so let's just stick with what God says. Let's go to the last realm here, mm -hmm. of course. That's the one that we're going to, upon our leaving this place, and well, that's it's, New Earth. I, I call it our graduation. <laughs> yeah, when we, when, when we overcome the obstacles and, and say no to all the sin and depravity of this world, and we are overcomers. Right. We're going to this new earth. We're now, graduating that, but to the new earth. But technically everyone, even if they're wicked, is going well, to go Right. To but what I but, mean is, yeah, the people who are living righteous and holy and trying to repent from evil in their life and stand for good and obey God, that you do get, graduate, you, you move on to another place that you a destination that you basically are rewarded with. That's right. That's where we're going. We're going to New Earth, folks. New Jerusalem. That's what that's what we're going for. We're going This is the good news. If no one is talking about this is our good news, right. what we're going to go for, they're not preaching a gospel message that is a biblical gospel message. Yeah. Our biblical gospel message that I'm teaching here on this show and I'm going to do, we're going to do another show on the gospel message, what's the true gospel message? Right. It is that we are going 
to New Jerusalem to be a citizen of that city forever. That is the true gospel message. Will it be no more? And, it, and Isaiah talks about it. Let's read Isaiah 65, 17. Right. And this gives you a clue on what this place is all about. Go ahead. For there will be the heavens new and the earth new and is in no way shall they remember the former things, nor in any way shall it come upon their heart. So, in other words, this world that we're living on now, we aren't gonna. They aren't. When they go to the new, when you go to the new one, <laughs> you're gonna forget all about this place. Okay, so I'm gonna go with this idea <laughs> that right now on this earth, we're all in high school. <laughs> Yeah. We're all in high school and it's, you know, having to make it through this hard life. And then we're going to graduate one day into the real world, the real life, you know. Well, we're just, <laughs> we're not going to remember this nightmare that we're living on yeah. right now. That we had to fight tooth and nail to get through because of all the wickedness and evil that has been pushed out our throats all of our lives. You know, we've never been in jail. And I know, you know, people who've, who've been in jail, they've talked about how hard and, and restricting it is. But really, as a Christian, this world is like a jail. This world is equivalent to um, having to go through and and make it through the difficult forces and people who are controlling, you know, the the all these evil things going on. Because that's what's really you consolidated the evil in one central area. Well, I feel that that we have good in this world as well, but there's a, the evil just seems to be creeping in around us. So we just have to persevere, press on know who we are, know um, he has a plan for us, and trust in the Lord with all our hearts and just keep living obedient and faithful lives because we will pass from this earth to the next and it'll all be worth it. We're, this is a prison planet that we're living <laughs> on. A prison world that, that, because the satanic forces have t- taken control of this uh-huh. whole thing. Prison earth. We're living on a prison planet. Mm-hmm. I don't even like to use the word planet. No, earth. Plane. Oh, a prison earth because it's yes. been taken over by the wicked forces. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it took time, you know, with the millennial reign of Christ being in the past. Yeah, Christ was running things for a while. And then he basically let Satan kind of come in. And guess what? Guess who it happened? You know, the satanic forces have since then have pretty much taken over now. And that's kind of the world that we're seeing now is wickedness has creeped in because that's what wickedness does. Mm-hmm. It's so enticing to, to our flesh yep. that people just succumb to it not realizing that it's a trap and so many people are so it, so many people are trapped into that system now yeah. that it's like now we're trying to wake people up and we need to get out of the trap well you know this is what we're trying to do god has given us an opportunity to make choices you could say inevitably it's either chocolate or vanilla but the idea is you can choose good and righteousness or you can choose evil and living for your flesh and you know not any having a care as to what's going to happen when you die. I think the mature and the most um I would be say that the safest is to live a righteous and holy life, trust the Lord, walk with him, um grow in faith as you age and experience this life, helping and encouraging others to live and make good choices as well because it's not about how we um, what we get out of this life that matters. It's what we we put into this life and get out of from the next. That's really what it is. It's not about I want what I want. It's about how am I giving? How am I letting God use me? And not only blessing my life because of my relationship with him, but blessing others' lives to help them grow in faith and knowledge of God. And I think that's really, it's like, how are you caring for other people and how you talk and how you live? Are they seeing a good example you know, we talked about this, about being trendsetters. You know, we've been trying to continually persevere through life and being better than we were 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. And I think God is just um, strengthening our relationship and our walk with him and helping us to encourage other people to do the same. You know, you might have lived a bad life, but you don't have to continue to live that evil life. You can change turn toward the Lord, walk in his faith and, and newness of life and look for forward to the new heaven. And new earth. That's, right. what we're, that's the realm that we're looking for. Of course, you could split that into two realms, mm-hmm. new earth and new heaven. Mm-hmm. So you got two news right there. So technically those are two more realms that have been created. <laughs> but I'm just kind of lumping all that together right. on new earth, new heaven, new earth as one realm. Of course, I could put new 
heaven and new uh, old heaven and old earth of one realm but i split it up into two whole point is this is going to be brand new brand mm-hmm. spanking new we know satan and the satanic forces have wrecked this place right. that we're living on now. right and they're geoengineering the crap out of it now. Yeah, yeah. We see that happening all the time. Yeah. And modifying our food, modifying our water, mod- trying to slow kill us. hmm We all understand that. We're slaves on this world. But we overcome. We understand what they're doing. And we're, we know, hey, God, you just got to keep watching out for us because we're going to that new place. Right. The new place that, that guess what, for Second Peter, talks right. about what's going to happen there. We're going to read 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13. Okay. It talks about this new heaven, new earth. Go ahead. But accordingly to his promise, we are waiting for a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Did you hear what it said about that mm-hmm. place? That's not obviously this world. That righteousness is dwelling and running this place. No. We yes. know that wickedness runs this place. Right. No, but the new earth and new heaven... Righteousness is dwelling there, and it's running that place. Well, you know, I think about it. I got, there's a bunch of Hall of Famers there. <laughs> you know, I'm talking, you know, there's David. There's all the people we read about in the Old Testament. and the New Testament, there's Paul and Peter. I mean, who does not want to go there? I mean, that's like um, God's Hollywood, so to speak. But it's like, not that that, you know. But we know, we can recognize the righteousness of the people that were before us in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And I look forward to being in the presence of people who they knew the right thing, they understood what was important, and they did what had to be done. We have a son that his his catchphrase is, I did what I had to do. Well, I think we all know what we have to do. We have to live a righteous and holy life and, and persevere and continue uh, trusting and honoring God with what he's given us. Something he's revealed to me recently is we're all on a mission. He has made each one of us for a purpose and a design. And when that time is done, when we have fulfilled our purpose, then our date is expired and we get to move on. I really believe that we need to be focused on what are we doing? How are we contributing and honoring him with the purpose he's designed in each one of our lives? We have his breath in us. So if his breath is in us, then we need to be living for him. We got work to do in this realm. Yes. We're living in the realm of earth right now. <laughs> because to make it to new earth, which is the realm we're going for, we've got to wake people up. Because we don't yes. want any more people being deceived by the no. devil. Which mm. uh, and The satanic forces are just running amok on this place. It's not even... It's out in the open now. It's, they're not even hiding their, the, mm. the, the wickedness anymore. You know, it used to be it was a little bit shameful to do all this wicked stuff. Now it's not even a shame. Mm-hmm. It's almost like they're all proud of it now. There's pride involved with their sin. You know, it used to be sin was like something that was shameful. You know, you threw them in the closet or whatever. Now it's us right. that are awake are the ones that are being thrown into the closet. I'm sorry, I'm coming out. That's why I'm, I'm coming out of the closet. <laughs> and I'm going to say what we have to say in order to wake people up to and, and say, no, I'm not going to put up with wickedness. Right. It's a shameful thing. And it'll cast you in the lake of fire. I'm not willing to... I'm going to say what I need to say. Right. This is what people need to be warned about. The satanic forces are deceiving everyone into going to the lake of fire. Is what right. they're doing. And I will not put up with that garbage. Okay? I am going to... For my dying day, to my last breath that God has given me on this earth, I am going to wake people up to this nonsense. Mm-hmm. I am so tired of it. Right. I have seen enough of it because the rewards each every person has... It's so grandiose and great. Right. And we have satanic forces that are trying to rob everybody of that. And most people are falling for it. Right. Most of the world is falling for this trap of not getting their rewards. Not getting their inheritance. Well, not persevering and not being um, courageous, victorious. See, we can, the Bible even says, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Well, I, I live on that strength. That is like my energy source and I really think we need to be focused on and in the word of God because that is where we get our encouragement our our strength our energy and knowing that he has made a a a way for us he doesn't leave us stranded he wants to help us get through these challenges but he wants to do even greater through us and if we just trust him he can do amazing things in each one of our lives if we just Give him the opportunity. Well, we live in a very dark and deceptive age. Mm -hmm. We must be vigilant. 
We must be manly. We must be fortified doing everything out of love, not only because it's biblical. But because it glorifies God. Join or contact us at satanslowseason.org. This is a non-copyrighted Living in Satan's Little Season production.